What's up you guys, Mental Hog back here on the channel. Episode 10, the season finale of the first season of the FIFA 22 Manchester City career mode here on YouTube. If you guys are as excited for this massive, massive game that we have to get underway today, make sure you leave a like on this video, subscribe if you're new to the channel, leave comment um, suggestions down below for maybe transfers for season two because that's coming shortly here on the channel as well. And um, I don't wanna waste too much time getting into this, but let's just kind of talk a little bit about this game that we're about to get underway here. So as you guys already saw, we're playing PSG in the final today of the Champions League. They won Ligue 1 with a 14-point gap over Lyon. They uh, won on 98 points, which is pretty impressive. I think that's even a better finish than any team in the Premier League had. So they kind of stomped the league, which is honestly, it's kind of to be expected at this point from PSG because they just have the most money. And obviously, we both were in the same group together. They had three wins, two draws, one loss, 11 goals scored, eight conceded. So we had a better goal difference and we had a better record than them in the group. Um, so we already know kind of what playing PSG is like, so we won't worry too much about talking about their team necessarily, but let's look at the route they took to get to the final. We know the route we took, we beat Ajax, they beat Sporting in the round of 16 in the quarterfinals, where we beat Liverpool, they beat Inter Milan 5-2 on aggregate in the semifinals, they beat Atalanta. So they kind of had a little bit of a tour of, um, of Italy here, and we had a little bit of a tour of England to get to this final, and now here we are. The two teams from Group A this season of the Champions League are going to be coming up against each other in the big dance. These are two teams that have been acquired in the last few, you know, in the last not too many years, I guess. I don't really know exactly how long ago PSG got acquired, but Manchester City about 10, 12 years ago acquired by Sheik Mansour. And uh, this is kind of, it's funny because this is kind of like the oil money derby, you know. I think I replied to a comment on one of the, one of your guys' comments on the last episode about that, saying something about the oil money derby. But yeah, this is going to be the lineup that we send out. This is our These are our best players from this season so far, and uh, kind of the highest performers, highest rated players as well, um, is also just kind of coincidentally what happened here. So Jack Grealish on the left-hand side, who actually has the most goal contributions of any winger, besides Raheem Sterling, who starts on the right-hand side. Harry Kane up top, Phil Foden and De Bruyne in the midfield, Rodri behind them, and our back line, Joao Cancelo, Emmerich Laporte, Ruben Diaz, Kyle Walker, Ederson in between the sticks, and we know what their team is going to look like. We're looking at it now, obviously, but Neymar, Mbappe, and Messi up top. Marco Verratti, Koke in the midfield with Frank Yannick Kessier joining for them from AC Milan. Nuno Mendes at left back, Sergio Ramos and Marquinhos at the center. Hakimi on the right-hand side, Donnarumma in between the sticks. Let's not waste too much more time, and uh, let's get this Champions League final underway at Sanderson Park, which isn't even a real stadium. Either team today who wins the Champions League will be winning it for the first time, by the way. Manchester City or PSG have yet to win a Champions League in real life. The PSG were in the final when Bayern Munich won, and Manchester City were in the final when Chelsea won. And so let's just get this game underway. Both of these teams have made finals, but have not been able to win the thing. This is the biggest game and the most expensive game in football now with the highest grossing number of money spent on these two starting 11s. Let's just hop right into this at Sanderson Park, I guess, and uh, go for the win. I was going to say three points, but there's no points to play for, guys. So let's get this underway. Here we are at not a real stadium. The atmosphere is still there, though, regardless. Manchester City going to roll out against PSG. We've talked about this game plenty. There's the coveted trophy that we're playing for today, and obviously we're aiming to get those tassels to both be sky blue and white on both sides, of course. There's another look at the route that we took to get to where we did, and uh, we kind of thrashed our opposition a little bit on our way and to the final here, so I would say in terms of our Champions League form this season, we're definitely looking on track to be lifting the trophy today, but if there's anything that we can look at to maybe give us a little bit of stress going into this game. It's our record in the Premier League, right? We kind of struggled in that competition, finishing sixth, which we saw the finale of that in the last episode. And yeah, I mean, that could maybe be something for us to consider going into this game. We didn't necessarily have the best season in the Premier League, despite having, you know, a really good one in the Champions League. And that front three is just absurd. We've all seen the lineups already. Let's just get this game kicked off underway and see if Silverware is in our future today. We've obviously already won Silverware this season in the Carabao Cup, but I mean, can you really compare the two? Of course not. We're keeping possession, kind of playing a slow game early on here. We're getting pressed pretty high. That was a little bit risky, if I do say so myself. Nice cutout. As I record this, there was just a live... Um, 
a live hotfix or something like that to basically uh, finesse shots from outside the box. So maybe not something we're looking to score today, but oh, wow, that was a close one from KDB, almost passing it off to Raheem Sterling. Koke apparently making his debut today in the Champions League final. So they've had him for what? At least since the January transfer window started about four months ago, and they haven't played him a single time. Is that what you're trying to tell me? Kessie trying to get some fancy dribbling. I still don't know if it's pronounced Kessie or Kessie. I've just been saying kind of a mix of the two. Ooh, KDB is on is through here on goal. Can we put this away? KDB shoots and scores in the Champions League final. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the lead 13 minutes in. Can you ask for anything else? You know, I was actually considering not starting Kevin De Bruyne today, showing the kit number, respect on his name. He hasn't been putting in the best numbers for us, despite being, you know, the best player in the Premier League, in my opinion, at least in real life, for the past couple of seasons. But, uh, yeah, he hasn't been putting in the numbers in this series. But, of course, you can, you know, you can trust him to step up in the big games when it matters the most. And I'm glad I put my trust in him. The gaffer, the gaffer, the skipper, scoring in the Champions League final on the biggest stage of them all. That is his second goal in the Champions League in this entire season. But, ladies and gentlemen... That is the kind of quality you're looking at when you look at Kevin De Bruyne. He can step up in those big games when he needs to. Well, the pressure is going to be on now. They've already been doing a really good job of pressuring me and kind of lowering my passing options, especially building out of the back. But, um, yeah, we're going to look to try and do something. Let's see if we can add insult to injury pretty early on, though, in the first half. I want to I wanna kind of get comfortable as much as possible. Obviously, it's the Champions League final, so trying to say you want to get comfortable is kind of ridiculous, but it's FIFA, so it's fine. Marco Verratti to Nuno Mendes. I'm going to run my center backs a little bit further back. I don't think I need to really feel the pressure right here. I can maybe use Kevin De Bruyne to kind of get forward and Mark Nuno Mendes, who's running low on stamina, Kylian Mbappe, trying to cut inside, looking for passing options. Nuno Mendes actually scores an equalizer. Oh my god. No way. The absolute drama in this game. I just said he's not a threat. And here he goes, showing, proving me wrong. And you know, the funny thing is, I remember hearing in the summer transfer window this season, in real life, that Nuno Mendes was rumored with a move to Manchester City. And that's not all I had heard about until he randomly moved to PSG. Kessier linking up with Nuno Mendes on his weaker right foot, putting that in at the near post. Questions have to be asked of Ederson there. He should be making a better save than that, especially with the way goalkeepers play in FIFA 22. That is really disappointing to see, that we concede like that. Our defense is... Oh, it's just so inconsistent. Sometimes it's really good, and sometimes it's really bad. Lately it had been good, but... Maybe that was just to get my confidence up. Oh, but Phil Foden threw on goal. Quick response. Okay. This is turning into a really open end-to-end -end game. Phil Foden scoring now in the Champions League final at the age of 21. Scoring also on his weaker right foot. So what is it about people shooting on their weak foot today? I don't know. But Phil Foden, the boy who scored the best goal I have scored in FIFA history, probably. In my opinion, at least. In my FIFA history, I should say. Scores for us on the big stage, Champions League final. And I mean, this is just this is just the kind of quality you can expect from him as well. Same from him and De Kevin De Bruyne. They're not similar players. That's not what I mean by that, but they can both perform on the big stage. Midfield getting involved in the biggest way for us today. Keeping Messi at bay. Joao Cancelo, nice job. Oh, but gives it right back to him. And we need to be careful in our midfield. We are getting caught out big time. Then Diaz is in no man's land. He's just kind of standing there. Ooh, a low driven shot from outside the box by Koke. Saved by Ederson. It's pretty dangerous. Now we gotta defend this corner. Jack Grealish just takes that. Okay. That was simple. Now he's gonna try and run down this right hand side. He's been featuring for us on the left, but kind of just ended up this way. Dribbling to get inside. Good job. Trying to get past Sergio Ramos. Does so. Harry Kane from outside the box. Let's have a pop. Hits the post. You gotta be kidding me. What? I didn't expect that to even do that much. That was an amazing shot from Harry Kane. Oh, ooh, ooh, Donnarumma. Almost making a really costly mistake at the in between the sticks there. Trying to dribble the ball backwards towards Harry Kane there. Easily could have gotten it on the intercept and scored. I think Karim Benzema has actually scored a goal like that in a Champions League final before. 
I think it was against Liverpool, but I think it was... I remember it being a Champions League final with Alisson in goal. I don't know if it was the, the game that they had, you know, the stinker from Karius. I don't think it's that same game, but I could be wrong. It's almost halftime. Try to get this ball out as far as we can. All right, that's going to be halftime. We're up 2-1. And, uh, yeah, this game is really open on both ends. Lots of attacks and lots of runs being created and lots of opportunities for both teams to score, as I'm sure you guys have seen by just watching the gameplay footage. Joao Cancelo, a featured man on that camera angle. And, yeah, within 15 minutes there, all the goals have happened. Stats in the first half. PSG actually dominating possession. 57%. We have had more shots, expected goals. Not passing so much, and we've won more tackles than them but also tried more as well, so, you know, kind of a back and forth game. Still could really go either way in the second half, and really the second half of games is where scoring can really open up in real life and in FIFA, so we really need to be careful and not rest on our laurels here with just a 2-1 win. No reason to feel comfortable about this at all. Let's see, maybe a substitution or something will prove to be crucial in the second half. It almost feels like I'm playing the second leg. Ooh, wow. Really physical play from PSG at the start of the second half. Wrestling the ball off of Phil Foden, who obviously is not the most physical player. Ruben Diaz is kind of in no man's land once again. Rodri was forced to mark somebody that he shouldn't have had to there. They are just getting all kinds of passes off. Rattle the crossbar and in. Is that Nuno Mendes once again? No, it's Kessier this time. I couldn't tell the kit number. All right, and Kessier now scoring. So like I said, we shouldn't feel comfortable with the 2-1 because... They can break us down, and they absolutely have been. I don't have any idea what my center backs were doing at the beginning of that attack from PSG. They were all over the place. Rodri, for some reason, had to come back and mark. and should never have to do that. Kyle Walker probably could have made the block. Ederson probably could have made the save. But it's not about what they probably could have done. At the end of the day, it's about what they did do. And what they didn't do... Or sorry, what they did do, I guess I should say, is they let in a goal. Now we have... Time. We have time to respond. I'm not necessarily worried, but we do need to find a response. Or else we're going to have to play 120 minutes of football today, and I don't necessarily want to do that. I would love to see Harry Kane getting a little bit more involved in the play. Kyle Walker can always depend on him to get to those balls before a winger does. Raheem Sterling out to Harry Kane. Looking inside. Phil Foden on a nice run here. Gets past his man. Can he score? I think so. Squares it up and scores on his left foot. A brace for Phil Foden. He is quickly becoming one of my absolute favorite players that I have used in this career mode so far. Oh my goodness. Phil Foden with a brace, ladies and gentlemen, in the Champions League final. This is just crazy stuff. I, I'm not nearly giving this as much energy as I should be, but I think the gameplay is kind of showing what it needs to show, and Phil Foden is just absolute quality. He scored on his left and his right foot today, and now he is potentially on a hat-trick, and potentially, if he can get something on his head, a perfect hat-trick. But I doubt that'll happen in this game. Anyways, we have the lead again, a response within 10 minutes of them scoring, which is good, but now we really, really need to start paying attention defensively and hanging on and making sure that nothing else goes in on our end. And the passing play right away is dangerous. Ruben Diaz, I really need you to find some opportunity here to get a tackle in or something. Emmerich Laporte is stopping at Mbappe's shot from outside the box. Rodri picks it up. He's got Koke marking him, so I'm not worried about him getting caught up to or anything. Now we have Harry Kane on the ball, looking for some sort of pass to get something started. Nuno Mendes getting the play started on the counterattack for them. We have bodies all over the place once again. Lionel Messi making that inside run. Neymar in the lots of space as well. We know they have the quality. Kyle Walker gets to it, plays it out for a corner. Good on him. It looks like we're going to see the first substitution of this game. Kessier coming off for Danilo Pereira. I don't know why they would sub off their man who has gotten a goal and an assist in the Champions League final, but they did. He looks unhappy about it, rightfully so. Because that doesn't make any sense in my opinion. Ederson catching that ball off of the corner. Now we're looking for something to do. I'm going to try and kick this ball. Ooh, that was a really risky idea for me, but Kevin De Bruyne now has the ball. I see... A run being made by Raheem Sterling, which I was looking to pick out, but didn't work so much. Maybe if I played a ball over the top, it would have been better. I see Harry Kane now making a run. Can I find him? No, because the ball actually goes to Jack Grealish first. The passing hasn't felt too great for me today, but I think really it's it's me. It's not necessarily the game. Now Lionel Messi in space. Gerard Cancelo, both of them knackered for stamina. They've been making runs like crazy all game long. 
looking for passes inside, trying to get our defense out of position. Danilo Pereira takes a shot, gets blocked by Rodrigo. I think it's time for us to make some substitutions of our own. I'm going to bring on Riyad Mahrez for Jack Grealish. He just hasn't really been able to do too much on that left-hand side for me. And I'm going to also actually take off Harry Kane and bring on Gabriel Jesus at striker. He has been doing well for us so far this season, so I'm going to do that. Tell him to get in behind. Maybe we can find another goal to really give us a cushion in this game. We have not been able to do that thus far. Harry Kane and Jack Grealish coming off the pitch in the Champions League final. It's no hard feelings. I just really want to try and solidify this victory. We have three substitutions. We really need to use them. Ooh, a good block there by Kyle Walker. Neymar taking the shot inside the box. Oh no, the passing. We're getting absolutely broken down. Riyad Mahrez doing some defending. Oh, but it's not too good. They still have the ball. Oh, Ruben Diaz is a lifesaver. It's the 81st minute. We really need to just be careful. Really? What was that pass? That was just terrible. Messi is down. Kevin De Bruyne trying to do some defensive work. The ball is just falling for them every single time. Kevin De Bruyne has the ball once again. Tries to control it. Actually does so successfully. Gets picked up. What in the world? Phil Foden needs to turn around and run after the ball there. But he just doesn't do so. And oh my god. We just cannot touch the ball. And every time we do it bounces straight for them. Did I just see? I kind of skipped over that. But Lionel Messi just got subbed off in the Champions League final. Is that Are they being serious? Hakimi to deliver the dead ball. Di Maria actually coming on for Lionel Messi. Are you joking? Doesn't seem like we have that many passing options. But I'm going to try and keep possession as best as I can in the closing minutes of this Champions League final. Kevin De Bruyne against Sergio Ramos. Uh-oh. Sergio Ramos looking to start something. We are in stoppage time. There's two minutes of it, and really all we need to do is defend. I'm not necessarily looking for another goal at this point. I'm just looking to stop their attack. And I think that is just about going to do it. Yes, it is. Get in there, lads. Manchester City winning their first Champions League ever in what was actually a pretty intense game. I'm not going to lie. Three goals scored in the first half, two for Manchester City, one for PSG. And then in the second half, again, a goal from each side. And it was a tale of just end-to-end -end intense football for very short periods of time, actually. In, one, in the first half, it was about 15 minutes there where we were scoring goals and things were really happening. And in the end, it was about 10 minutes. I mean, in the end. In the second half, it was about 10 minutes early in that half where things were really happening. And then it was really just about holding on and really trying to stay solid at the defense and not concede another goal to get something really not good happening in this game. My substitutes didn't get a chance to even make an impact because we had just been defending for that whole last 15, 20 minutes or so. But yeah, I mean, we're lifting the most coveted trophy of all, the Champions League. All that we have left now is the Premier League to win, boys, and this series is done. Kevin De Bruyne going to get it lifted for us, and it's time to celebrate, boys. Yes! Manchester City, your Champions League winners of the 2021 and 2022 season. And this is something that could happen in real life, really. They play their cards right, if they have the luck on their side like we have. This could really be something that happens in real life. So, I couldn't be more proud of the boys for the season that they had in the Champions League. They did really, really well in the group stage, in the knockout stage, in the final. Despite winning this game 3-2, I would say the final might be one of our worst performances in the Champions League this season, to be honest. Because this game was just way too close. Defensively, I just wasn't quite awake enough today to concede those two stupid goals like I did, but we're also able to outscore our opposition at this point with the players we have. I kind of expect that, you know. Fireworks going off at Sanderson Park. I don't even know where Sanderson Park is, but time to get in there for the club photo. Everybody is down there. Emmerich Laporte, Kevin De Bruyne, Ederson, Rodri, the whole team. There they are. That's the squad that won us the Champions League this season, boys. Soak it all in. This is the first of hopefully many Champions League on this channel. Champions Leagues on this channel. Not just in FIFA 22, but in EA, Sport, EA Sports FC 23, whatever they decide to call it next year. Hopefully this is the beginning of many, many trophies. Final stats for the game. We got 1% more possession. <laughs> That's great. Um, than we did in the second half. But they actually completely outshot us, outpassed us, out expected goals to us, out intercepted us, all of that stuff. And our man of the match in the Champions League final is actually Phil Foden with an 8.4 match rating. 
Kevin De Bruyne with a 7.7 match rating, and Harry Kane actually getting all three assists today in the Champions League final. So he did make something happen. I made it sound like he didn't really do anything, and he did almost score quite the goal from outside the box, if I do say so myself. But yeah, that's going to be the Champions League final, and pretty much everything in Season 1 done. We just got a couple more things to look at, and we'll just finish this off. There you have it, the post-game screen showing you the winner of the competition, Manchester City, your inaugural Champions League victory. For all of you citizens out there, this one is for you. And let's take a look at the scorers sheet for the Champions League. The Golden Boot winner is Raheem Sterling, 13 goals in 12 matches. And then we had Duvan Zapata for Atalanta scoring 11 goals. And Bappe had scored 9 goals this season in the Champions League. Harry Kane has gotten 6 goals. Gundogan actually with 5 goals in the Champions League. I wish we could have had an opportunity to play him more, but it's just unfortunate with the rise of Phil Foden, for him at least, that he wasn't able to get more game time. Phil Foden as well, 5 goals. 2 goals of those in the Champions League final. And then for PSG, they also had Neymar with four. And then looking at the top assisters, creators in the Champions League, I think it's no surprise that we're going to see Harry Kane up there with eight assists in the Champions League this season. Three of those coming in the Champions League final. So Lionel Messi, don't think he got an assist in the Champions League final. They were tied up until the Champions League final when Harry Kane just really ran with it. De Bruyne as well. So Messi and De Bruyne with five assists. Ilicic up there as well with five. Joao Mario with five. Mbappe with five. A lot of players with five assists. But I'm really just looking for Manchester City players as well. Jack Grealish, three assists in the Champions League in his first season playing in the competition. Can't ask for much more from the lad. He's doing a good job. Neymar Jr. Why did I say the junior part? I don't know. With two assists. And then clean sheet wise, Ederson actually topping the charts, winning the Golden Glove. So we've got Manchester City winning the Golden Glove, the Golden Ball, the Golden Boot, and the actual trophy itself. So... I mean, what more could you ask for? This is the best Champions League season we could have had as a Manchester City team. Now let's look at a couple of things table-wise. I didn't actually show you guys the full Premier League table. I showed you guys who won and I showed you where we finished, but there's more to that than the table. In the table, obviously, there's also who won, who got relegated, who finished in the bottom, stuff like that. So I am curious to see uh, what those teams were. So as we know, Manchester United and Liverpool went down to the last day. Man United came out on top. Chelsea and Leicester City make up the rest of the top four. Wolves in 5th. We finished in 6th, with which, which would have put us in Europa League, but we actually won the Champions League, so we will be playing Champions League football next season. I think that means Leicester. Unfortunately, they for Leicester didn't just never make Champions League. Even though they made top 4 this season, they still won't get Champions League. They're going to be playing Europa League football alongside Wolves next season. I think Arsenal takes our spot in, uh, in that maybe as well, I think. Yeah, or maybe they're doing the Conference League. I'm not 100% sure. The rest of the top 10 is West Ham, Newcastle, and Spurs. And then really we just care about the relegated sides. You guys can see that Leeds, Burnley, Villa, Southampton, Everton, Brighton, Brentford, and relegated down to the championship next season. I'm actually a bit shocked about that bottom one. Crystal Palace, Norwich City, and Watford. So yeah, Watford going down. So sad to see that from Ben Foster. They were five points uh, behind 17th place Brentford, who barely, barely, like by the skin of their teeth, stay up in the Premier League. That's pretty crazy. Community Shield at the beginning of the season, we destroyed Leicester 4-1, so that was an easy one. The FA Cup actually ended up getting won by Everton over Burnley, so that's a very interesting FA Cup final. I forget where we kind of bowed out of this competition. We made it to the quarterfinals, that's right, yeah, we played against Leicester and we got a little bit thrashed, who then, they got thrashed by Burnley, uh, who then got thrashed by Everton. I know we won the Carabao Cup 4-2 over Luton Town, it actually ended up being a lot more interesting of a game than I expected it to be, I remember that game, it was fun. The Super Cup at the beginning of the season, Chelsea winning out over Villarreal. We obviously won the Champions League. The Europa League was won by Napoli over Villarreal. And the Conference League, Roma win the inaugural Conference League in this career mode save. Usually it's Tottenham Hotspur, to be honest with you. Season 1 and Tottenham winning the Europa League, uh, Conference League is just like a one of those truths in life. And, except in this save, I guess. And we also have a World Cup happening this season. Not that I'm doing international management, but uh, I think I even have it disabled in this save, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, there will be a World Cup. So I'll show you guys who wins that at the beginning of next season. Uh, next season, yeah, in the next episode. Uh, let me know if you guys are interested in seeing me do international management, by the way. It's not very fun, to be honest with you, in FIFA to do international management. Maybe when Pfeiffer's mods come out later this year, we can maybe look to get into that. But yeah, I'm not super, super keen on doing international management, really. 
And let's quickly take a look and see who got promoted from the championship. Sheffield and Fulham coming back up. I'm not quite sure which one of those other four teams are going to make it up. Unfortunately, we can't see the championship playoffs, but two of the teams that were relegated last season in real life are coming back. Maybe West Brom will join them, I'm not sure. We already know who won Liga, and that was PSG, our opponents in the Champions League final. The Bundesliga, however, wow, Dortmund actually winning by eight points. So Erling Holland carrying his team to their first Bundesliga title in a little while. Serie A was actually won by Juventus, otherwise known as Piemonte Calcio. In this game, they actually usually have kind of a hard time, but they have actually done really well this season on 88 points, seven points clear of Inter. Uh, let's take a look at the last top five league that we haven't seen yet, which is La Liga, which was won by Atletico Madrid for the second season in a row. Villarreal actually sliding into that second spot, Barcelona behind them and Real Madrid behind them. So who's really in a shambles, Barca or Real? Really is both of them because Villarreal should not be finishing second ever. And just a couple of last things to look at. We are going to look at our top goal scorers and all that stuff for the season one more time. Harry Kane, 23 goals and 20 assists. That is 43 goal contributions in 48 games. So to all of you who are recommending I sell him or swap him or get somebody else at striker, I don't really see how I can justify that when we have somebody putting up numbers like this. This is all, you know, a really good season from Harry Kane. You can't really ask for too much more from a number nine. Maybe some more goals, but 20 assists is just ridiculous. And 23 goals is not bad either. Raheem Sterling with 20 goals and four assists. He has really stepped up to become one of our best goal scorers. And most of those are from the Champions League. He's only scored five in the Premier League. And yeah, I mean, just all around great player for us, Raheem Sterling. I'm very impressed with him. Gabriel Jesus stepping up in a massive way for us this season as a backup striker, really making a case to uh, to play more games for us. He's gotten 16 goals and six assists. Maybe we can look to play Gabriel Jesus on the wings or something next season. We could maybe use that. Gundogan with 12 goals and nine assists. Uh, didn't feature too much for us towards the second half of the season as kind of Phil Foden kind of took over his position, but. Yeah, he did a really good job for us, and that maybe somebody can keep around as a, as a backup player next season. Riyad Mahrez with 12 goals and 4 assists did pretty well for us. Jack Grealish on his inaugural season as a Manchester City player, 10 goals, 11 assists. Kevin De Bruyne stepped up a little bit towards the end of the season there, 9 goals and 10 for him. Phil Foden, 9 goals and 7, including just the best goal I've ever seen scored, that bicycle kick goal. Ferran Torres, 6 goals and 2 assists. Bernardo Silva with 5 and 10. That's about it in terms of our top goal scorers. But we did also have contributions from players like Kyle Walker, Rod Dries, Lichenko, John Stones. And I think that actually ends off the list because these are all our loan players. By the way, we have a lot of players out on loan. So potentially a lot of players moving on next season, something like that. Look at all that, Jesus, so many players. One last thing we're gonna do before we actually cap off this episode and this first season in charge of Manchester City is we're going to do a little bit of an awards ceremony. This is something that I have seen other popular career mode YouTubers do that I actually really like and I think it's a really good opportunity to get you guys involved in kind of helping me decide who wins certain awards. So we're going to start off with our best transfer this season and we really only made two transfers for you guys to choose between but realistically that's all we need is two options for you guys to vote for maybe a third I'm not sure you guys let me know how many options you do want but I'm going to start you off with two this season. Uh, I'm going to say your options are and your only options are Harry Kane, who we brought in from Tottenham Hotspur, and is obviously most likely to win this comp uh, this this trophy, I guess you could call it. It's not really much of a trophy. I don't have anything to present or anything like that, but, you know, it's an award that he can win. Um, he came in, he became our top goal scorer, our top sister in the team, just in general. 23 goals, 20 assists for Harry Kane this season, so look out for him. In the next season, he could prove to be even more deadly. But I think he's our best transfer. But uh, like I said, it's up to you guys. Your second option is Declan Rice, who we brought in from West Ham in the January transfer window to kind of replace Fernandinho and maybe work his way into the squad a bit more. He's been all right for us, and I hope he features for us more in the upcoming season. So yeah, go ahead and vote for those. There'll be a straw poll in the description down below. So make sure you check that description because it's actually important this time. There's actually something for there, there for you to look at. And also while you're down there, my social links are down there as well too. So my Twitter and my Twitch, make sure you follow me on both of those because I do try and post on Twitter a little bit more regularly now. And I do stream on Twitch occasionally. I did it more before I started making YouTube videos for FIFA 22, but and I haven't done it really since, but it's something I want to do a little bit more of as I get more time. Uh, the next thing I want you guys to vote for is actually the player of the season. Um, this one is going to be between two players. Once again, Harry Kane on here as well. 23 goals and 20 assists for the man in what was just an absolute uh, crazy season for him in terms of goal scoring. 
Uh, he did well for us in the Premier League and the Champions League. And even, yeah, that was about it, actually. I didn't really play him in many other competitions. But uh, your second option is actually Raheem Sterling. 20 goals and 4 assists for himself this season. Top scorer in the Champions League by a long shot. Probably up there as one of the highest scoring Champions League seasons ever. Not quite breaking the record or coming anywhere that close to it, but did a really good job for himself in the Champions League. And all around was actually a great player. Really turned his prospects at Manchester City around, unlike what was happening in real life. So I'll let you guys... But for those things down in the description down below, there'll be a straw poll for the best transfer. There'll be one for the player of the season. And then the last thing that I do want to talk about is going to be the goal of the year. Uh, normally, I would want to have a vote for this, but this year, there's just absolutely no competition at all. The goal of this season goes to none other than Phil Foden for scoring that bicycle overhead kick in the semifinals of the Champions League against Chelsea. If you don't remember what that looked like, here's a clip of it real quick. I see Raheem Sterling on the far post. I'm going to try and play across to him. It's going to actually land for Harry Kane. Phil Foden scoring the goal of the season. Oh my God, an overhead kick from Phil Foden in the Champions League semi-final. Just an absolutely stunning goal. Absolutely deserving of that prize. And I hope to see more of things like that from not just Phil Foden, but the rest of this Manchester City squad in the upcoming season. And that is going to cap off what was a great inaugural season of not just Manchester City, not just anything related to FIFA 22, but also just on my channel, first full season being completed of any career mode that I've ever done, and the support from you guys has been absolutely insane. The fact that I could upload a video and have it within one day get over 100 views is something I never even thought possible, so I want to thank you guys for making this career mode go even nearly as long as it has, because you guys have kept me motivated. If you go through and look at some of my older videos, I've never finished a, even one season of a save, let alone gotten to the point where I've won a Champions League and could successfully say that this is a good place I could end the save. But we do have the Premier League to hunt down next season. I'm going for that trophy. So I expect to see you guys back on the channel supporting me and helping me get there as well. So make sure to drop a like down below. Subscribe so that you don't miss out on the next season, which should be coming very soon. I'm not 100% sure when, but it'll be coming soon. So keep your eyes peeled for that and leave me comments down below and make sure to vote in that straw poll for the best transfer and the player of the year. That has been the whole first season done, though. I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching, and have a great day.